Hello guys, it's Tom here from WB Trading. Welcome along to the second in our series of videos on how to use TradingView. Now, if you haven't seen the first one, I'd encourage you to go back and watch that before this video. We just covered some of the basics, how to navigate through the menus of TradingView and getting started loading up a chart. In this video, we're gonna go into a little bit more detail, specifically covering indicators, how to apply them to charts, how to save templates, and just some helpful tips to really help you navigate through using the charts in more detail. So we've loaded up into TradingView and I've just opened up a Euro USD chart on a daily time frame. Now the first thing we're going to do is look at how we add indicators onto the chart. Now if we go up to the top here, along the top row you'll see a tab for indicators, metrics and strategies. We're going to open that up and what we get are a few options here. Now, the one we need to focus on right now is the technical tab. And when you open up the technical tab, you'll get these options. You'll get standard indicators, what I imagine most of you would know when we refer to an indicator. We have a tab for strategies, we'll come on to in a minute, volume, chart, and candlestick patterns. Now, we're gonna stick with indicators just for this example. And as you can see, if I scroll down, there's an awful lot there. Now we're just going to pick a very straightforward one to go through an example of planning out on the chart and I'm going to pick average true range which hopefully most of you will be familiar with. I will point out at this stage we can also search for any indicators so if we're looking for say a particular moving average typing it in will give us the options that relate to the word we've searched for. So we're going to go back and use ATR for this example. Once we've selected the indicator just click on it and it should appear on the chart. Now, as you can see, our chart's changed. It's moved up slightly and we've got an ATR below. We can move this around if we need to, just to free up some space. Now, some indicators will go directly onto the chart. Some of them, depending on how they function, will go above or below or to the side. So once we have that, now we can start looking at how we can change the features of this indicator. So now we have the relevant indicator selected we need to go down here, highlight it, and as you can see, there's a few options appear when we hover over the title. There's this little eyeball, which just tells you, do you wanna hide the indicator from the chart? You can click on that and it will disappear. Not too useful for an indicator that's down here, but if you've got something that overlays onto the chart, or you've got quite a lot of indicators going on, it can be quite useful to hide some from time to time. The next option here is the one we wanna focus on right now, settings. We can click this, and we'll get some different options to help us basically define the parameters of our indicator. So you can open up this box. It looks very similar for most of the indicators that you would load up with input style and visibility. Visibility wise, I would always leave as default. It's much easier unless you're going through a very specific strategy. And this video isn't really related to using different indicators in certain ways. Style, just looking at color and line thickness, if we want to change anything on there and make it look slightly different. I mean, for ATR, most familiar with using a line, so I would always leave it as a default again. And inputs wise, just a few things that we can adjust here. Time frame, as with visibility, I would always recommend just leaving this as default. It just gives you the option to load up an ATR of a specific time frame if you want to compare it to a chart of a different time frame. Length. Again, I'm not gonna go into a huge amount of details on how to use the ATR indicator or any others in this video, so I'll leave that up to you for a different video. But in general, I would leave that again as the default. Smoothing wise, once again, there are a few options for ATR, but always just leave it on the relative smoothing. We can look at simple exponential, or I think this is a, somebody's specific smoothing strategy, but R RMA, just the best one to leave it to. So now we have our indicator set up hopefully as we would like it. And as you can see, we can see the parameters of the indicator down here and measure it out, use it however we need to. Now, one thing that's quite good to mention at this point is, you know, are we gonna get a bunch of indicators clogging up our screen? And what can we do about it? We've already gone through a simple tip here just to hide them, but if they are getting in the way or you maybe wanna drop one in, quickly check it and remove it, you can click down here to delete, or just to save you a little bit of time, you can use a middle mouse button to just click anywhere on the indicator and it'll disappear. So like that, 
we can take the indicator off the screen quite quickly. Now, before we look at setting up templates, I'm just gonna go through one more example of how we can apply and how we can use the indicators on our charts. So for this one, I'm gonna go again into the indicators tab and you can see here now that we have a new section called favorites and we have the exponential moving average selected. I'll quickly show you how to do this and it just saves time if there's any indicators that you're using regularly, it's helpful to just put them in your favorites tab. So if we go into technicals, as we would to look for any of the indicators we need to use, you can see as you hover over any of these, there's a little star here. Once we click that, it'll become a favorite indicator. Obviously we can remove by unclicking here and it just helps you save some time really instead of searching through. So I'm gonna add an exponential moving average to the chart. You can see here now that we have this solid blue line that's appeared. Now, as ATR was down here, if we're looking for anything that overlays onto the chart, the indicator will appear up at the top here. And we have the same buttons that we had for the ATR. Settings, we can hide and unhide. So you can see that we can remove the indicator from view if we need to. Obviously we can change a few things, particularly on something like the EMA. We might wanna change the period, make it say a 50 EMA. And we can move these things around. Now often, you know, if we're using something like a moving average, we might want a few placed on the chart. Obviously we can go back in this way, add a second one on and adjust. There you can see now there's a slightly different sort of greenish line that's appeared. So I'll go back to a nine period as the default. You can also click on the indicator here. We can copy and you can paste in just to add some more in if you need to. Now one thing that might be quite handy if you're looking at something that overlays onto the chart is just seeing the performance of indicators by themselves. If we go up here, you can see hovering over the actual market we've selected, we can just hide the candles. And if you want to see just the indicator performance for whatever reason, the option is there. Conversely, if you want to just look at the candles again and hide everything we're doing on the indicator front, we can go down here to the sidebar, go to this icon, hide indicators, and it takes everything off. And we can just quickly click and unclick. If we've got multiple indicators, it's gonna save you the time again of going up here and hiding each one individually. Okay, we're now gonna look through how to set up a template and just make it a lot easier to transfer your collection of indicators and maybe the chart set up in terms of time frame to other charts, just to save you the time of having to click through and add all those indicators in individually. So we're gonna go up, we're gonna add one more indicator to the chart. I still have the two EMA levels on here if you can see here on the indicators tab, I'm just gonna use this drop down button here to select favorites. And as you can see, I've added in an RSI to our favorites just to make it simpler to access. So we're gonna put that onto the chart, just close the add down. We're not too worried about the settings for the RSI and I would been through that in terms of how to adjust. What we're concerned about here is setting up a template. So once we've got the indicator selected that we'd like to use for the template, we go up to this tab here at the top next to indicators, click on this and you can see we get a few options. So first one, save indicator template. This is basically gonna be the way that we convert all these indicators into a default template that we can use on any chart in the future. So I'd click that button, we get this little box, just gonna call the template number one. Now the two boxes here, remember symbol means that whenever we load this template up in the future, it would always default to the chart we're looking at right now in this case, Euro USD. I tend to not click this just because if I'm using a certain amount of indicators or combination, I'd like to see it across different charts, but I will tick remember interval, which will mean it will always come back to the time frame that we're on on this chart, which in this case up here is a daily time frame. So I'll tick that, and as you can see, it just gives us a quick recap of the indicators that we're using. Now, once we click save, it means it's there for us to access. I'll show you how this works now. So if we go back into the template section, I'm first gonna transition across to one of the default templates they've already got set up. We're just gonna choose the Bill Williams one. And as you can see, when we click on this, obviously the chart layout changes. We've now got things like multiple moving averages. We've got a volume down the bottom. I'm gonna go back now to our template, and you can see just up at the top here, click the button again. We go into the my template section and we have the only template we've done at the moment, clicking this takes us back to the screen we saw a few seconds ago. Now, 
If you are adding in multiple templates, it can be quite good in this section to favorite some of them if you need them. I can't remember how many are accessible on the free version of TradingView. You will be access, you'll be able to access more on the pro version, but certainly you can put quite a few on there. So obviously there are the default ones there if you want to use, but I would suggest, you know, if you're using a regular combination of indicators, it's going to save you a lot of time to have them selected as a template here. And in case you just want to delete them in the future, obviously just the remove there and it'll take it off the, uh, off the list, as you can see there. The final thing I wanted to cover in this video is the alerts. Now, as you can see, we've just taken off the RSI to make the screen a little cleaner. And if we go up to this top section here on the alert tab, it's going to allow us to set up a variety of options to basically tell us when certain things have triggered. Now we can open up alerts based on indicators specifically in these tabs here. Let me go on to more, but I'm going to do a general alert and show you the different options up here. Once we open up this tab, the first thing it'll give us is a few decisions we want to make based on our market and what we're actually looking for as the alert. Obviously, I would usually keep it on Euro USD if we're just looking for a price alert. And if we want a specific value, we can add it into here. You know, when does the market cross a particular value up here or down here? We can change this to a variety of things if it's only crossing up or down, you know, entering any channels or anything. There's a variety of options here. Now, what we're going to look at in a little bit more detail now is what we can do in terms of the alerts for particular indicators. So we can look at this and say, do we want to know when the market crosses a certain moving average? You know, maybe when it crosses the 50, we get a few options here. We can even expand this out a little bit more if we go up to the top box here and say, well, do we want to know when one moving average crosses another? You know, when we get points like this. So there are a lot of options to dig down into here. If we go a little bit further down the page, expiration time, do we want it open-ended? Do we basically want it to activate once and then the alert disappears? And a few more options down here. You know, how do we want the, the trading view platform to tell us when the alert occurs? Quite a few options here. Obviously, if you've got the app, it gives you a little bit more flexibility. If you're on desktop, something like a pop-up, probably most suitable, but we can also go through and sending emails. And obviously down here, you know, alert name and message. If you've got a lot of different alerts set up, it's good to define them so you know which ones appeared. But all in all, quite a comprehensive system that we can use here. And obviously the more indicators that we have on the chart, the more variety in terms of planning out these alerts. As I said, if we want to do an alert specifically for an indicator, we can also go into this section here more and add an alert in this way. Opens up the same box, but if you want to find the specific indicator, it may save you a little bit of time going that way around. Now, once we have an alert set up or multiple alerts, the way we can manage them is to go into the alert section up here in the top corner. As you can see here, I've just set up a simple alert. If we open up the settings, you can see just the 50 crossing the nine, but it'll give you the option to pause if we want to obviously restart and adjust any settings and delete. As I said, you know, depending on the platform you have on TradingView, whether it's a free or a pro account, we can have quite a lot of alerts set up. And down here, you can see if any have triggered in the past where you may not have been able to see them. That's all for today. Hopefully that has been a helpful guide, just introducing the basics of using the indicators, the template system, and how to set up alerts on TradingView. As I mentioned earlier, you know, if there's anything you'd like us to cover, whether it's on TradingView or anything else within trading, please let us know in the comments and we'll pick that up on a future video. Other than that, Thank you for your time. Hopefully this has been useful and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.